Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 58 of the video series in which we program an entire video game from scratch in the C programming language. We had one interesting uh, question since the last video and it goes. I have a question. Can't you just save the progress in a JSON file or something and restart the game? I know the feedback loop is way worse, but isn't this easier for now? Um, okay, and then he says, what I really meant to say is why don't you just do a save system? I get the platform independence thing, but I don't know if that's that. Uh, okay, so to answer your question, uh, we definitely will be doing a save system in the future. And let me go ahead and open up something here to write with. So if you recall, I'll do a, a brief uh, refresher of the last episode. It was essentially we are we have begun the process of of um, separating our code into two separate projects. Basically, we're going to have the uh, platform layer, which is going to be the executable or game b.exe, and then. We're also going to have a uh, game code.dll, which is going to be a platform independent, in so much as insofar as that's possible. So the idea is that we are all the code that we are going to write that is uh, that can be reasonably made platform independent. And by platform independent, I mean it can run on Windows, it can run on Linux. Um, granted, we will likely have to recompile um, this. Set. We're going we're gonna to have to recompile this module for different platforms, um, but the code will not have to really change. Um, meanwhile, anything that is very specific to Windows is going to stay behind in GameB.exe. So while the game runs, we're going to call. The DLL, we're going to load it. And meanwhile, we could also have like a game B dot, um, I don't know, whatever Linux people do. I don't, they use no file extensions or whatever. To have like a Linux version of the game, right? But the idea is, is that it would be able to re load the same module. And that goes for other platforms too. If you wanted to do like Mac OS or if you wanted to recompile it for ARM or something like this, uh, the idea is that this module will basically be, uh, it'll be compatible so that we can recompile it to any platform that we move to. That was the wind slamming a door shut. Either that or my wife is really mad and I don't know uh, why. Um, anyway, uh, so his question is, um, is why wouldn't it be really e wouldn't it be much easier to do a save game system? Um, and remember, there are two reasons why we're doing this. Is um, number one, it um, begins us down the path to platform independence. Uh, but the second reason is also that it allows for uh, dynamic code loading. And this one is really important to me right now. This, this, the reason number one, platform independence, is actually not all that important to me right now. It may become more important to me uh, later on down the road, but um, as of right now, the main reason I'm doing this is for the dynamic code loading. And um, what do I mean by that? Is I basically mean uh, we are going to set this up so that we can recompile gamecode.dll while the game is running in the background and the game while it's running in the background will detect automatically uh, in its main game loop that the DLL has been uh, recompiled that it's been modified and it will dynamically uh, reload the DLL so any changes we make to the game code uh, will happen in the game uh, more or less instantaneously 
And this is super important because we're making an RPG. We're making a role-playing game. We're making a, the type of game that is going to have um, a progressing story and hours of gameplay. So it would be uh, crazy for me to, um, you know, do what I have been doing up until now, where imagine if I, you know, play, hour, uh, you know, an hour or two into the game, and then I find a bug that you can only get to once you've played the game for two hours. And then I decide, oh, we need to fix this bug. So then I fixed it, and then I have to recompile the entire game and uh, get back to that point, play the game for another two hours to get back to that point just to verify that the bug is fixed. Um, that's obviously, you know, a ridiculous idea. Uh, it's never going to work. So that's kind of why we need this. So the commenter is asking, well, wouldn't it be easier to just make a save game system? Uh, and the answer is we are definitely going to make a save game system in the future. And we're going to use both uh, this method of dynamic code loading, but we're also going to use our uh, save game system uh, in the future. We're going we're gonna to have both. They're, we're going to have the best of both worlds um, eventually. So the idea is like, you know, if I, I can just uh, load a save game that will warp me to the point in the game that I need to be at, uh, to work on, you know, some miscellaneous bug or verify that some bug deep within the game is, is actually fixed or not. Um, while we're looking at this, though, the idea would be that um, such a fun like gamecode.dll would have a function in it called um, called uh, uh, load save load save file. Okay, and that would be the platform independent version of load save file, which would eventually, which is, would essentially be a wrapper uh, that would lead us back to uh, this platform layer, gameb.exe, would have like, you know, the relevant, you know, we're going to have to do like read file ex and, um, you know, uh, create file, read file ex, etc. The, um, Windows specific things that we have to do in order to like read a file from disk um, so that we can then read the load the save file and load it up into the game. Um, meanwhile, this this in the game code.dll will be sort of a platform independent abstraction layer. And as far as like Linux goes, I don't even know what you do to like you know f open, f read, etc. We'll explore all that later, uh, but hopefully this makes sense. So, yeah, the answer to the to your question is we are going to have both. I'm going to close that now and I'm going to let's see, close this, and then we're going to open the project. Oh, and by the way, I want you to notice that this is actually an animated uh, background. If you look very closely. At Mega Man's hair, you can see that his hair is blowing in the wind. Just wanted you wanted you to see that. Um, source repos can be all right. And now we have to open up two projects from now on, don't we? Game code. This will take a few seconds to finish loading. All right, now we have Game B, the Game B project open and the Game Code project open. And I remember from uh, last episode, we basically were first getting into what a DLL is, uh, how to make your own DLL, how to export functions from your own DLL, uh, things of that nature. And I gave you a, basically a brief overview of DLL main, and um, DLL main is Windows specific. So every DLL in Windows needs to have a DLL main. And when Windows, every time a thread loads a DLL, uh, you're automatically, that thread is automatically going to execute the DL, whatever DLL main is in that DLL. 
Um, and while that's happening, no other DLLs can be loaded by any other thread in the entire process. Uh, it's called the, the loader lock is whenever your thread attempts to load a DLL and whenever you run a DLL, DLL main inside of that DLL is automatically executed. And while that's going on, no other thread in your process is allowed to load another DLL because of that lock. There's a lock that is global to the process. So I know I said all that in the last episode, but it's important because it's one of the most common class of classes of bugs uh, in the Windows operating system. Are these loader lock bugs where um, your DLL main either gets hung or inadvertently does something that triggers uh, trying to load another DLL while you're already loading a DLL and then next thing you know you have your pro your entire process is hung uh, and can't then you have to like kill it with task manager or whatever anyway Linux doesn't do any of that kind of stuff uh, this is Windows specific and so to that end um, I've added this if def uh, win32 uh, to it so basically none of this stuff is going to exist um, outside of the Windows operating system. Also, you'll notice that my DLL main does absolutely nothing, and that's on purpose. I, um, the, the best DLL main is the one that does the least. So um, I chose to do absolutely nothing in my DLL main. We don't need it. We just need it to exist um, just for Windows sake. Uh, let's see. So then next we talked about the uh, decal spec DLL export um, keyword or decoration or whatever it's called. Uh, this allows you to export functions. And so just to drive this point home, I'm going to go and I'm going to find this DLL. It's x64 uh, debug gamecode.dll. Let's see copy as path and yeah see I was using the run DLL executable to uh, run this DLL as I mentioned last episode the sole purpose of run DLL 32.exe is to be a DLL host um, its job that program's job is to simply load a DLL of your choosing and execute an exported uh, function um, from that DLL and to demonstrate so I'm going to do this one more time for demonstration purposes but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this message box in test funk 01 so I'm not going to I'm going to leave that alone but I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go here into DLL main and I'm going to change this for to hello from DLL main and then I'm going to rebuild it. Okay, now I'm going to execute this. I'm remember I'm using run DLL32 to load the DLL and call test funk01. Hit OK. Notice the first message box we get is hello from DLL main. And as you can see here, we we didn't we didn't explicitly call DLL main, remember? Uh, DLL main is automatically called by the Windows operating system. Um, and you can't not call DLL main. It's not optional. It's not something you can skip. So um, the next best thing to do is to just have DLL main sitting there in your code, but just don't do anything with it. So then I hit OK. This is a, you know, a blocking message box. Uh, hit OK. And then immediately I get another message box that's hello from test funk 01. That's the function that I actually called. So I just wanted to demonstrate that, um, you know, to demonstrate DLL main being automatically called, um, even if I didn't, you know, explicitly ask for it. All right, um, getting to the point where I want to do some real get some real progress made on this game. So let's go back over here to main.c and go to winmain. 
where do we load our DLL? Somewhere in here we loaded. There we go. We have this function called load game code. Okay. All right. So in here we have in this function we do a load library on our module file name, and then that's where we stopped. So now that we've we've loaded the module, we need to actually start importing functions from the module. And before we do that, do I need to call? I'm trying to decide if I need to free this or not. The handle to this module, do I need to free it? I don't. I don't know. We'll have to look that up here in a second. Um, all right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to start importing functions. And the only function I have in gamecode.dll right now is testfunk01, so let's just do that. Uh, import that. I'm going to go to main.h, and I'm going to essentially... So remember last episode, I mentioned that we've already been importing a function from a DLL for a long time, right? Um, right here with NT query tunnel resolution. So we essentially just need to copy this, and I guess I'll take it down here to the global function declarations, and I guess I will put it right there. All right, so we need to copy out the type of function this is, game code, it's an int, it takes void, okay, int, it's int API, which is, this is not std call, it's actually cdecl, isn't it? Like that. And it's called test funk01. And it takes a void. It takes no arguments. Imports from gamecode.dll and then we are going to do test funk01 and that is going to be called test funk01 okay so is that code correct let me see let's try to build it see what happens Everything looks right so far. So now I need to go about actually importing test funk01. So we'll go back to main.c. We'll go to load game code. And we're going to go to, um, again, let me just copy the code that I've already got out of winmain. Uh, the code that I've already used in winmain, which is right here. Right there, copy that, go back to game code, or load game code, load game code. Paste, whoops. Whoops, did I do something? What did I do? Okay, so my solution just crashed. I think I just crashed Visual Studio. That's pretty unfortunate.
back to load game code, back to this, okay, we're going to do if test func01, right? Cast this into a test func01. Type def. Okay, get module handle, which we don't have to do. We've already done. Hmm. So this is the next thing that I don't am not sure about. So uh, the get proc address function is designed to get the address of a function inside of a DLL, right? So we've already loaded the DLL with load library. It's in our memory. It's in process private memory now. It's already loaded in memory. So the get proc address simply finds a function by name. Uh, in the DLL. So I, the question is, do we need get module handle anymore? Since we've already got game code module, we've already initialized that with load libraries. I don't, I'm assuming we do not need this anymore and instead can just do game code module since we've already loaded it. And of course the name of the function that we are going to be loading is test func one. Okay, so we have done something wrong here. Let me go back to main dot h. Okay, I'm going to move this down here. Okay, so let's see, NTAPI, uh, this is <clears throat> simply a pound defined to uh, STD call, standard call, which is just a calling convention. Uh, we went over calling conventions uh, in one of the first episodes. Um, not terribly important to me, but I do think this needs to be a pointer. Let's try to build it again. Okay, rebuild succeeded. There we go, main.c, load game code. Get proc address, let's see. If that fails, then we will capture uh, last error and go to exit. Make sure nothing is in our, we didn't leave that thing in our, we didn't leave that message box in our DLL main, right? No, we didn't. Okay. Okay, so we've, we've loaded, we have loaded our module, we've imported test func01 from our module. Um, the question still in my mind though is, do I need to 
Do I need to free it? Like if I do a free library, if I do free library, uh, that's going to unload the module, so I'm guessing I wouldn't be able to use any of the functions in it. But I'm wondering if that holds the if that locks the file so that I can't recompile it. I don't know. Something we'll have to experiment with. It's just something we're gonna have to play with. Um, right. Back to WinMain. All right. So load game code should work successfully. And we'll say let's do something like in process player input. Just a just as a test, we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna do if get async key state um, f2 then we are going to call test func 01 there so that should call the function that we've imported from our DLL, which is, it pops up a message box, right? So let's run the game and see what happens if I press uh, F2. After all these symbols load. Okay, I got a box that says hello from DLL main. Maybe I forgot to rebuild the DLL after I removed that message box. Uh, let's see what happens when I hit F2. I get the test funk 01 message box, which is pretty awesome. Every time I hit F2, I get hello from test funk 01. So it's working perfectly. Let's go back here and rebuild this because I don't want that DLL main message to pop up every time we load the DLL. Okay, rebuild that, switching back to game B. Now I want to, I want to just to make sure of something. If I go to load game code, and I do something like this, I'll do if game code module. Free library. Game code module. I want to see if if I call free library, does that mean I can't use any of the functions? Uh, that I previously imported from the module. I have a feeling that's probably the case, but I just want to make sure. Okay, uh, F2. Yeah, F2 now crashes the game because uh, since we called free library, it invalidated any of any function that we had previously imported. So. That is definitely something to keep in mind, which means that tells me we should make our game code module global instead of having it be a stack variable. Let me go to back to load game code. We are going to take that away. We are going to 
make this a global okay main dot h let's go find our global variables Global variable declarations. Pass all these data structures. Okay, I'll put it right here. H module. Okay. run it works perfectly okay next step back to load game no back to win main here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go to our main game loop now which is down here a little ways. Here it is. This is, our, this is where our main game loop begins. The question is, do I want to do it at the beginning of the frame or at the end of the frame? Oh, I know when I want to do it. I don't, obviously, I, what I'm going to do here in this main game loop is I'm going to check to see the last modified time of gamecode.dll. And if it has changed, then I want to unload it and reload it before the next frame comes up. So I'm going to go to... Obviously, that's not something I want to do every frame. I don't want to uh, check that file every you know, 60 times per second. So instead, I'll, I'll do it in here where we calculate our average FPS and do our other stuff, which is every two seconds every 120 frames, right? So I guess I will just do it. Maybe I'll do it here, okay? Uh, so how do we get the last modified time of a file? Is it get file time, get file title, get file time of the handle, creation time, last access time, last write time. That sounds like that's the function I want. We need a handle to the file. So I guess we will make a file handle here and call it um, game code file handle equals invalid handle value and we're going to do game code file handle equals create file file name let's create file a we're going to give it a file name of game code module. It's kind of confusing the way I named those things. Uh, desired access is going to be generic read, I think. Share mode is going to be share mode read. I forget what it's called. Apparently that's not it. File, share, read. Security attributes. I think that's a null. Uh, creation disposition. Need file open 
disposition. We need flags and attributes, which I think is zero, and then template file is null. Okay. If game code file handle equals invalid handle value, we need to log this error, log message, uh, log it as a warning, and the message will be. function Let's see failed to load game code module zero x percent weight x and get last error there we go so I mean if it's working up until this point I don't think that we should like crash the game if if I failed to read the game code now so I'm kind of thinking this should be a non-fatal error since the game's already working we just failed to load dynamic code and yeah okay and in fact now that I think about it this whole mess is only something that is only going to be done if we are debugging, right? So we could probably if def this whole thing and I don't know about you guys but I like I like these precompiler directives to be indented uh, along with my code. I mean I understand why they're not but it's the way I like it. Okay, so we'll assume that loading that file was successful. So if it is successful, then we need to get the file time. Get file time. Um, game code file handle. And then we need like creation time, last access time, last write time. So file time, um, actually I'm pretty sure that everything that you don't need can be null. We only care about last write time. Last write time, whoops, there we go. Let's see, creation time can be null, last access time can be null. We just need last write time. Did I, oh, I misspelled it. I is lowercase. Okay, let's go and look up. Get file time. If it fails, if the function fails, the return value is zero. So if get file time equals zero, warning function name. Get file time failed with zero x percent x. Get last error. Okay. But if it did not fail, then let's proceed.
And at the end of all this, don't forget to close handle game code file handle. If game code file handle does not equal invalid handle value. Then we're going to close it. Okay. Cool. And you know what? Let me go ahead and take these out and put them here underneath this if def. So we need something to compare the last write time to, which means we need another global variable, which is going to be a file time um, g game code last write time. Okay. And in load game code, in the load game code function, we are going to do. Oh, that's so annoying. I have to do it here too, huh? Okay, let's see. Copy what I just did out of WinMain. game code paste. Okay, game code file handle equals create file. I'm going to change this to module file name generic read file share read So here in load game code, I'm simply going to re I'm simply going to record the last write time. So g game code last write time equals last write time. There. If it was successful, then close, and then. I guess that's right. It feels kind of strange to me that I have to get the file handle with create file and then separate then as a completely separate inf uh, operation I call load library again. I have a feeling load library probably calls a uh, create file um, internally. I just don't know of a way to like load library won't give me a file handle. It gives me a module handle. So I guess there's no other way to do that. There's no like more efficient way to do that. Right. So back to WinMain yet again. 
back down into the main game loop. Let's find, okay. So I've opened the file. We'll say I got the I got the last right time. If last right time dot um, I think I need, do I need to cast this to like a large integer? That's really annoying. So the reason all, the, these are all just like 64-bit integers, but because of the, because of backwards compatibility, um, Windows has a lot of these unions in them that are just like double that have this double word uh, high and low part in them, and then like some some of the data structures will have like a quad part um, union. Um, so that you can you can express the entire 64-bit integer all at once. It was back. It's back from a time where everybody had 32-bit computers, right? Now that we have 64-bit computers, we could just use native 64-bit integers here, but it's a backwards compatibility thing. Anyway, uh, let me let me go to large. No. File time. Let me look at a file time data structure. See, it is not recommended that you add and subtract values from the file time structure to obtain relative times. Instead, you should copy the low and high order parts of the file time to a large integer, perform 64 bit arithmetic on the quad part member and then copy low part and high part members into the file time structure. Do not cast a pointer to a file time to either a large integer or an N64 pointer because it can cause alignment faults on 64-bit windows. Right. OK. I'm going to ignore everything that I just read and I'm going to do if last right time um, high does not equal g game code last right time dot high because remember the the point is is that the the, the last right time if it differs at all then that means that we need to reload the game code, right? Last right time dw low, which and that should be an or game code last right time dw low, and this is the point. This this is the point of the episode where. IntelliSense stops working. Okay, so if last right time high does not equal game code last right time high or last right time low does not equal game code G. Ah, there's my miss. See, I that C instead of a G. This must be why IntelliSense didn't work. Okay, so at this point, we need to reload our code. Right? So let's just call load game code with game code module. And I'm going to go back up here, copy out this code that we wrote earlier for load game code. Way up here at the beginning of, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Paste. 
Okay, if it's not error success, then, uh, but I'm not going to exit the game. I'm just going to do a warning. I'm just going to log the warning. That's it. Failed to load game code module. Okay. Now I need to go to back to load game code. And so if if load game code, remember it gets called once at the very beginning of WinMain as the um, process is first launching. And then it gets called again anytime the DLL file changes or is modified. So what we need to do here is we need to we need to do an if uh, g game code module. Basically, if that's not null, it's mean we, it means that we've already loaded our game code. So we need to actually free library game code there. So we free it if we've already loaded it. Yeah. So at this point, I think that I have covered any sort of like handle leak uh, potential. I don't think we're going to have any leaks. I guess let's run the game and see if it actually works. Hold on. I need to fix these warnings. Uh, okay. Function D word differs in level of indirection. D word. Create file. Disposition. Are you sure? That looks right to me. Create file. Well, I've used create file plenty of times before, so let me go look at another example. Log file. Create file A. Oh, wow. Yeah, I completely messed that up. open always. Wow. I'm surprised it didn't crash. That is not at all what I thought it was, so let's change that to open always. And let's change you to Erase that. We don't need it anymore. Open always. Basically, that just means um, fail if the file doesn't exist, as opposed to creating a new file, which I hope I didn't trample on. X64 debug game code DLL. Okay, good. All right, let's try that again. Okay, everything seems to have worked. Uh, let me go to... Oh, let me go back to PowerShell here. Let's see, X64, debug. We have, let's see, game, game, I want to look at the log file. Um, do I not have the loading turned up? I mean the logging turned up. There it is. Successfully loaded code from game module. If I hit F2, I get hello from testfunk01. 
Okay, now here is the uh, here is what we've been working towards. I'm going to leave the game running. Okay, I'm going to go back to gamecode.dll. Will it let me write this this file? No, it's locked. Is there a way to have the module loaded in memory while allowing the file on disk to be not locked and to allow us to overwrite it? That's what I need to know. Because right now the file is locked because it's loaded by gamebee.exe. So what I could do, uh, I could compile I could actually compile this to like a set a different file um, I'm thinking okay let me go look up load library load library stack overflow Nope, sorry. Load library ex. Load library has some flags. Okay, so this flag, don't resolve DLL references, uh, is a flag for the load library ex function. And the description of it is if this value is used and the executable module is a DLL, the system does not call DLL main for process and thread initialization and termination. Also, the system does not load additional executable modules that are referenced by the specified module. Oh, no, do not use this value. It is provided only for backwards compatibility. Oh, okay. So I was about to say, I was about to eat my own words when I said earlier that you can't not run DLL main. I was like, well, it looks like you can actually just supply that, and that would allow you to not have to run DLL main. But, yeah, of course, the documentation says do not use it. So, hmm. ignore code off Z level. Load library as data file. Cannot call functions like get module file name, get module handle, or get proc address. Use it only when you want to extract messages or resources from it. Okay, so I think since we're already over time, I'm not quite going to achieve the result that I wanted to today. So uh, the problem is, is that we have the module loaded uh, in memory, and as long as that, as long as we have the module loaded with load library the DLL file on disk remains locked such that we cannot update it by recompiling gamecode.dll from our other solution over here. So I could compile it to like a file with a different name and then have the game like swap the files out I guess um, but I'm going to in the meantime try to come up with a more elegant way of dealing with this so um, that will be the problem that we're going to continue with next time. Um, we're out of time for today, so that's that's all uh, that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed what you saw, uh, you want to see this game uh, continue development, please um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends. Um, if you have any questions or comments. Don't hesitate to leave any questions or comments on any of the videos about any topic. I will be happy to address any interesting questions or comments in an upcoming episode. Lastly, don't forget that we have a GitHub repository, which I think I have pulled up over here, right there. We have a companion GitHub repository that I keep updated 
uh, alongside these episodes so that you can clone it and follow along um, on your own. And with that, that is it for today. So thanks again for watching. See you next time. Bye.